Okay, so we're back working on the Ford Escort today. I did finally get a battery for it. Let me grab it real quick. Okay. Car battery. Check. Just remember, so this thing was actually $99. Last time I bought a car battery, I thought it was like $45. Literally half the price. Last time I bought a battery. Just getting the battery is not actually the only thing we have to do. So I gotta check all the fluids, make sure we have everything needed to drive a car. So I'll pop the hood. See if we have any coolant in here. It appears the answer to that question is nope. Looks like the valve cover might be leaking from here. You know, one big difference between the electric cars like this leaf and that volt and gas cars is that a lot of the stuff inside a gas car tends to go rotten. Motor oil, gasoline, coolant. Ooh, they might have quite a bit of oil. Let's see. So there's a clean front. Let's take that back in there. Pull it out. Yeah, we have oil. So for now, at least, it looks like it's good to start. Put some more coolant in here. Just so you guys know, coolant is actually extremely toxic, so never drink it. Oh shit! I put water fluid in the coolant overflow tank. I screwed up big. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure if it'll actually hurt the car. From what I remember from Auto Tech back in high school, shouldn't be a big deal to the radiator or any other cooling system. But luckily I haven't started the car, so I should be able to get the coolant tank out and pull all the windshield washer fluid out of the coolant reservoir. Put it back in the thing, junk that, and put some clean coolant in there that's not contaminated. So I'm going to go get a 10 millimeter socket or however big that is, pull out that coolant overflow tank, pop the fluid back in there, and do as I do. Now as you all know, never pour antifreeze slash windshield washer fluid down the drain, ever because it's extremely bad for the environment. Let's see what other bolts are I pull. Holy shit, that's a big black widow, motherfucker. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is just popping this one to wash your food into here. Last time I checked, there's no issue with mixing two different kinds, so. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be, wow, that's not even a color, it's just brown. Oh my gosh. I'm glad to do a cool flush on that car. Of no questions, is there any coolant in the radiator? Yes, there is, that's good. Which really is anti-freeze. See, I wasn't kidding, these cans all look exactly the same. Brand new battery going in this car. I'm gonna put some dielectric grease on here to prevent too much corrosion. Shit. Oh, this just happened. Why can't anything just be easy on this car? Okay, so I'm gonna go to AutoZone, but I've already got the battery locked in right there. Actually, this thing is the perfect grease applicator right here. Look, absolutely perfect. Car guy life hack: use the the positive battery cap as a dilithium grease spreader. Works like works amazingly.
There you go. I put a new bolt on the battery. It's actually off a lawn tractor. Uh, so let's see if it starts. It'll be the first time I think in almost two years that it'll run. Hopefully. Keys in ignition. We have beeping sounds. Fuel pump is primed. Oh, something weird just happened. Let's see. Sounds like there's a strange, like, knocking sound coming from the engine. Uh, I actually did end up getting the car running only for a few seconds, and I heard a, a really, really bad knocking sound. Now, initially, I thought it was a rod knock, but the more I listened to it, it didn't really sound like a rod knock. And I, I then realized that this car has Z-Tech, or a Duratech, or basically variable valve timing, or available cam timing, or whatever Ford calls it. Anyway, since this car has been sitting for about two years now, I came to the conclusion that more than likely all the oil that was up here in the valve assembly that controls the valve timing and everything has gone down to the sump. And that being the case, when I tried to start it, it gave me all those issues. So, I'm going to double check to make sure that this car is not an interference engine. Then I'm going to do some more startups and see if I can get the oil back up to here and get the oil pressure back to normal because I think that's the issue why are these bolts so loose oh my god we're missing a bolt here this is terrible work here oh my god it's not even it's that's insane okay so I've done the research and this car is a non-interference motor there's still a possibility that a valve can hit the piston but from what I hear, it should be pretty low. So I'm going to try and start it and demonstrate the sound for you guys. This is what it sounds like. Or not. Turns out it might not be starting today. Let's see. One last time. It's trying to start. The knock has gone away. I can say that right now, but it's not starting. Ooh, shit. Okay, one last time, let's see. Ooh, that was close. Shit, it runs! Okay, so the engine knock is totally gone, leaving me to believe that, yeah, the problem is... Oh, I knew you wouldn't break. You run fucking amazing. That smell weird, though. No, old gas smell. That's what I did. So while the engine heats up, I'm just going to explain what the problem was. Because this car is a variable cam timing car, uh, the issue was that the, the cam timing is actually controlled hydraulically via oil pressure. Because this car has been sitting for two years plus, and we have such massive temperature variations in Las Vegas, just between night and day and summer and winter, what has happened was all the engine that was in the head and in the valve system has gone back down to the engine. Now, the engine knocking sound came because it didn't have the correct oil pressure in the VCT system to get the cams into their correct position. 
Now that we started the car for a bit and had it running, there's oil back in the valve train. It runs pretty smooth, considering that it has been sitting for two years. One thing you gotta love about these Fords, man, half the time they fix themselves, bro. Honestly, I was expecting more white smoke from two-year-old gas. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes, see if the temp gauge is moving, because I can't remember if it uh, works or not. So the next video is going to be uh, replacing the coolant temperature sensor, which is faulty on this car. I was able to drive this car on the block and repark it and get more driveway space, which is very much appreciated. But uh, yeah, next video, replacing the coolant temperature sensor. Uh, if you liked the video, hit like. If you found my info information informative, hit like as well. You know, helps me boost my ego. And if you want to see more of these videos, hit subscribe because there's going to be a lot more coming. I did just buy the coolant temp sensor. That was about, I think, 25 bucks at AutoZone. What's odd is they switch production or they switch temp sensors, I think, sometime during the production year. So be aware of that if you're getting it. Make sure you get the one that corresponds to your car's correct manufactured by date. And I might also be replacing the fuel regulator. I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to do some more diagnostics on that. I'm going to make a video of that. I have a power locking kit that's going to be coming in here with the solenoid actuators and everything. And who knows, there might even be some rail lights coming on if I have the money. This is all the stuff I want to do to the car before, but... You know, it was my mom's daily for like six, seven years, no, five years. Served real well. Very reliable car. Kind of sad to see it go, but at least I know my friend will take good care of it. Anyway, hit subscribe. Have a good one, guys. Do whatever you do on the internet.